How you doing? So if you poke around on YouTube enough, I find you really start to get jealous of other people's machines. Oh, would you look at that? <laughs> yeah, well... Would you look at that? Yeah, there's... We're living in the future, man. It's time I get with the future. It's about time that I catch up. So today, we're gonna build ourselves a CO2 laser tube. tube itself will be made out of just a regular old acrylic tube with a glass tube on the inside for a laser which neither of which have come yet so hopefully Amazon hurries up I don't know what's wrong with them lately I, I'm an American I love my instant gratification but we can start machining the end caps for it out of these chunks that I cast in a previous video so I got this thing all chucked up in the lathe. This is about two and three quarters of an inch thick. It's almost easier and definitely less wasteful if I just melt this down and pour it into a two inch cylinder. So we're gonna do that. Here we go, shifting gears entirely, all ready. Got everything done on the lathe that needs to be done. So now there's a lot of holes that need to be drilled and tapped in these. In order to figure out where the holes go on the back, we're gonna build our mirror mounts. Now I've never cut aluminum on the plasma cutter before, but we're gonna give it a whack. It took three tries, but after a little bit of grinding, we got a couple acceptable pieces. So, moving right along. So shipping's taking forever these days. And I ordered a glass tube maybe two weeks ago. It still hasn't shown up. So we're gonna try and use these fluorescent bulbs as our glass tube, but we need to cut these. And I got kind of a stupid idea. I've shorted out the leads on the power supply for the electromagnet with some nichrome wire. We're gonna wrap this around the bulb, heat it, and then let it cool quickly and hopefully that'll make a clean break. All right, cross your fingers it doesn't blow up. Oh, that kind of worked. Can I sand it down? You can sand glass down. Let's stick these pieces into the glass tube and try and pull a vacuum and cross your fingers we don't get an implosion. Or if we do, that it looks cool. That looks good enough for me. I'm gonna have to replace the chair I'm sitting in. There's bite marks in it. So. We're confirmed, this tube and this setup is gonna work. So now we can finish off making the water cooling jacket, add our electrodes, finish our mirror mounts, and we can start testing. So we have our O-ring installed in there. And check it out. Perfect fit. Noise! Yeah, they call it a tap and die set, and I very rarely use the dies, but I very frequently want to die when I'm tapping holes. Makes sense. For my mirrors, I have these first surface gold-plated mirrors. Those, I want to at least set this one back inside of here. So I'm gonna have to cut a little bit out of the middle of this plate. Oh my God, what happened? Much better. Got all our parts built. Full disclosure here, I rebuilt every single part. I was having a real hard time getting all these put together with the fluorescent light tube without breaking it. And I'm sure it can be done, but it'll be by gentler hands than mine. So I remade all the parts to fit this borosilicate tubing that I ordered. It finally came in. Now then, these go together like glass tube on the inside 
And then our acrylic tube goes on the outside. And this is a real tight fit. Then we get a neoprene washer. And then our gas fitting fits on the inside of the glass pipe, like so. And then our mirror plate, I'm gonna clean this first, but that goes right on the back there. Alrighty, don't mind the clamp. I actually ended up epoxying it, though these were just a little too jiggly in there. So, we have our partial reflector installed on the front. We have our mirror installed on the back. Now, let's start working on the water system, which I will do off camera. I'm just hooking up some tubes to a pump. I just have it zip tied on the side of the bucket there, and it's going from the transfer pump through the system and back into the bucket. Very sophisticated. Now, we gotta start worrying about our gas mixture. For our gas mixture, if all my sources are correct, I'm gonna need about 11%. We're gonna need about 11% CO2, 9% nitrogen, and about 79% helium. Wait, 80% helium. So in order to get that mixture right, we're just gonna use a balloon and measure the diameter and figure out exactly how much of each we're ending up with in there. And it's not gonna be perfect, but it'll be pretty dang close. And as far as getting the gases, this is 20 bucks at Walmart. Helium's good for the CO2. I finally did it, guys. No more flux core welding on this channel. I got some shielding gas. About dang time, huh? And then for the nitrogen, nitrogen is weirdly expensive and I didn't want to buy a whole bottle of it, so I got a source. Don't tell on me. All right. Woo! All right, we're all set up. I've tested the water system, it works good. There are no leaks despite my lack of hose clamps besides in the pump housing itself on a brand new pump. Harbor Freight! Now, we have a Schrader valve on old Suckboy here hooked up to this end of the glass tube and then our balloon on the other end with a ball valve so we can pull the air out of the system and then fill it with our gas mixture that we just put together. A variac so we can at least kind of slow start on our supply. And our power supply we're using is just a neon light transformer with an output of 10 kilovolts. Only 30 milliamps, but 10 kilovolts. That's, that's your dead voltage right there. So we're going to be very careful here. Let's do it. We're gonna let that go until we get to the maximum that old suck boy can provide, which I think is around 27 inches of mercury. We can check that this is going through and it is pressurized in there. So I'm gonna try and turn it on without running the water first, but only very briefly. Laser goggles on. Now, how do those other YouTubers do it? Nice. All right, starting to very act very low. One arm behind the back. I don't see anything. You see anything? I think we have a small leak. All right, I pulled off the insulation between the two machine parts. Just maybe we can see what's going on. And this is full power. We're arcing out to the water caps. So that's just been running through the water this whole time. Probably making a lot of hydrogen gas in there. Um, oops. Three weeks later. Let's go. Many months later. Come on. So much later that the old narrator got tired of waiting and they had to hire a new one. Of course. The one time I don't turn on the camera, I finally get it working. Let me get my glasses. What? Either the problem is that my partial reflector was in backwards because I swapped that out a couple times. Could have been a flow rate thing, could have been a vacuum thing. Honestly, it's all up in the air. I don't know why it suddenly works, but vacuum pump is running. And I open this little ball valve on the balloon until I see the needle move just a little bit. Here goes nothing. <laughs> Can you believe it? 
Now we don't seem to be getting any output, but the fact that we even have a plasma is incredible. I'm so happy. So I'm editing this thing right now and I realize I never really explained how my setup has evolved. So I thought I'd pop in here real quick and give you the rundown. Hence the robe. I swapped out that little 10 kilovolt transformer for another neon sign transformer, but this one is 15 kilovolts at 60 milliamps. So much bigger power supply. Two, the water jacket and the system are exactly the same, but I filled it with distilled water so it's not conductive. I still have the balloon, but it's on a needle valve now so I can make very fine adjustments because it only takes a little, little bit to get the thing going. And then I have way lengthened the hose because I found I'm getting funky discharge over the line if the line to the balloon is less than the line across the whole resonator, if that makes sense. And then on the other end, we have another really, really long hose going to a Harbor Freight vacuum pump. I don't actually know if that is making a difference, but it's hooked up. I think what really made the difference is I finally adjusted the mirror properly. It's one of those, you give a hundred monkeys a typewriter and you'll get Shakespeare kind of things, you know? Anyway, back to your regularly scheduled program. Do it. Look at it, it's beautiful. Still not hot on the outside. All right. I don't know if you can see that, we seem to be getting a little bit of a funky discharge in the inlet port. Let me turn the lights off. <laughs> Look at that. Beautiful. Well, I've blown the last fuse I have on my Variac, so... This is going to be an ongoing project. I'll probably improve the power supply in the next one so we get a better output. Well! We have a pretty cool new light fixture. <laughs> this project really threw me for a loop. I, I thought it was gonna be a whole lot easier than it was, but man, I tested that thing constantly for weeks. And the lasing that we finally ended up getting looks good to me. It looks like a clean beam. I think one, the laser won't run very well on an AC power supply and the raw output of the neon sign transformer is in fact alternating current. So, I'm gonna have to rectify that to get a DC output and then possibly smooth that with a capacitor, but I don't know. I'm gonna have to do more research. This is going to be an ongoing project, but I'm pretty happy with where we got on it now. At least we know it works. We know the ins and outs of how the gas is supposed to be flowing and whatnot. In the next video on this laser, I'm gonna be improving the power supply for it and flushing out the cooling system making that a whole lot nicer and hopefully putting it in a box and making it so it can be electronically controlled because the end goal of this laser tube is to make a CNC laser machine. Oh, and also getting a beam that actually burns stuff would be nice, huh? So anyway, hope you liked what you saw. If you wanna get more updates on this project as they come out, remember to subscribe, maybe leave a like, and thank you so much for watching.